Slingshot is the brand new sci-fi thriller film that is brought to us by director Mikkel Hafström. Mikkel Hafström, of course, is that Swedish director who's known for making all sorts of fun and amazing thrillers. He's brought us movies such as the 2005 thriller film called Derailed, which had Clive Owen and Jennifer Aniston. The 2007 Stephen King adaptation and probably best film of his, 1408 with John Cusack and Sam Jackson. Or the 2011 horror film, The Right, with two-time Academy Award winner Anthony Hopkins. But this film, Slingshot, it tells the story of this group of these three men that are on this spacecraft called Odyssey One, who is en route to Saturn's moon Titan. And in the midst of all this, there's the possibility of mutiny. There are these situations where they're having some amounts of cabin fever and mental breakdowns and so on and so forth. And those three actors that we have in the film are Casey Affleck, Lawrence Fishburne, and Tomer Capone. I'll tell you guys, when I saw this trailer, I thought, okay, this looks a little hokey. It looks like one of those sci-fi films that's mid to low budget, that's probably set on the shelf and is just getting tossed into theaters for the hell of it. And my, oh my, how right I was. Because Slingshot was produced and filmed in 2021. It was shot in December, to be precise, in Budapest. And it was not released until just now, August 30th, 2024, which is now today. It's released, and that is, of course, here. And it was the third film I saw on my Triple Feature Thursday that I did last night, along with the films City of Dreams and Between the Temples. On a technical note, I want to say something. This is really interesting. I don't think this has ever happened before. All three films I saw were all in a flat aspect ratio. Nothing was scope. Nothing had a 235 ratio. And what's even more interesting to add a little bit of pepper on top of that, the last two films, City of Dreams and Slingshot, were in Vittorio Storato's Univism aspect ratio of 2 by 1. It's still flat. There's tiny little black bars at the top and bottom of the frame. But it's rather interesting, all things considered, to see a comedy, a drama, and a science fiction film all have essentially a flat ratio and no rectangular letterbox scope. It's just a little weird, especially this sort of film. And the fact that the majority of the films that Mikhail Hafstrom has directed usually feature such a ratio. But moving on from the technical stuff... Good God, is this film a slog. <laughs> the movie is just over 110 minutes long, and it feels like it's four hours long. You know, we constantly have the same sort of moments of cutting back and forth of Casey Affleck having images in his head of uh, times with his girl, what was her name? Zoe, that's it. She was played by Emily Beacom. And these moments of these flashbacks and times of thinking that he sees her on the ship, can't tell the difference between reality and what's imaginary. It's it, it just it feels like one of those episodes of the Twilight Zone that you would have seen from back in the day, but not one of the standard 25 minute ones, one of those boring season four episodes of the Twilight Zone that was stretched out to an hour, just way too long, such little substance too long of a runtime. I'm telling you people, if you would have cut out even the reference to the character Zoe and you would have cut out all of the stupid flashbacks and they feature everything you can imagine. The flashbacks are sometimes told in a hazy fashion with the voices echoing. They're told in a way that it's meant to advance the plot forward. You have you know, moments during these flashbacks where the characters have a breakup to make up or how they met, things like that. It's so inconsequential. The movie should have just been called cliche slingshot or just cliche in general and made it a spoof. Even its tone, it just, the only person that adds any real depth to it is, of course, Lawrence Fishburne, because you're not exactly certain of his motiv 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 uh, forgive me, Jesus Christ, motivations. He plays the Captain Franks. Captain Franks is his name. And you don't know exactly whose side he's on. You don't know if he's good, if he's bad. He, of course, brings some levity to this otherwise boring and routine picture. But when it comes to seeing Slingshot, this is something I never want to see again. It was just so boring. Once, once 41 minutes had passed, I had checked my phone and I didn't even know that's how much time had passed. I thought we were more than halfway into the film. 
I thought we were towards the end and we weren't. And I was like, oh my gosh. You know, like I said, it very much feels like something that has sat on the shelf. The visual effects and sound design are pretty solid, especially the front stereo channels. There's constant shots of an automated door that opens and you can hear it perfectly travel from the left and close and click on the right speaker. And there's even moments where people are click clacking on their keyboards and they're precisely placed on the left, even some echoing in the left rear channels. Sometimes the voices will perfectly slingshot all around the place, no pun intended. So it has some substance there. There is something there. But that something should have been saved for, may it rest in peace, this is the perfect kind of film that's warranting a red box rental. One of those kind of odd features where you see some you know, reasonably bankable stars, like one or two of them, like these two that are in this movie. And you're like, oh, I never heard of this, but I know who both of these people are. And you pick it up for a dollar, watch it while you're talking on the phone or something like that, or talking on the couch with your friend or a Netflix and chill kind of moment. That's mostly what Slingshot is meant for. But in terms of a big audience picture with big time thrills and stuff, oh my Lord, you are not going to find that here, honey. What you are going to find is a cliched film that feels too smart for its own good. It feels so predictable. You can easily see how it's going to end. The foreshadowing is told in such a strong way. It's as if Stevie Wonder drew it out himself. It is just such a disgrace watching this movie. I had not been so bored in such a long time. It is one of the worst films I have seen this year. I cannot recommend Slingshot to you. Really, just skip this movie altogether. I'm so sorry to say that, especially considering the talent in front of and behind the camera. And as of this recording on Rotten Tomatoes, this has a 48%. On IMDb, it has a 3.9%. And in terms of my grade, I'm going to go ahead and give Slingshot, I'm so sorry, a D-. minus. The reason I don't give it an F is because at least the production design and technical aspects are passable and good enough for what they are, decent sound design, decent immersion into the world, but it ultimately gets such a low grade because of its cliched narrative, at times really, really cheesy acting, and just an overall sense of been there, done that, rinse and repeat, and I swear to God, if I had to see one more POV shot from a surveillance camera, You'll know what I mean if you ever get around to seeing this. I'm going to pull my hair out of my head. Just trust me. This is not worth seeing. If you have any inclination or you want to know any bit of what this movie might be like or look like, the trailer, of course, is in the description. Watch it at your own discretion. It is two hours. I'm sorry, two minutes and change. And that's enough that you need to see. It's going to give you everything you want in terms of what you might assume but just overall, Slingshot needs to get flung way out into the deepest reaches of space, only to never be seen again. Even though its ending is cliched and a bit ambitious, it's just not worth the effort. And with that being said, you guys take care and never forget that the cinema is the perfect arena for conflict. Thankfully, there was none for me except the film itself. <laughs> You guys take care, support filmmakers like Mikhail Hafstrom, and you guys continue to be wonderful and enjoy your weekend. And this is the final film of August 2024. I look forward to seeing what comes up next week, and I hope you guys have a chance to watch those as well and listen to my thoughts. And you guys, as always, I'll see you at the movies. Bye now. <laughs>